happy birthday, Tara. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing okay. I am I am 46 today, which means at least half of you in the chat, yes, I am old enough to be your mother. Eat a vegetable, drink some water. We can legally be disappointed in you now. Ah, oh, my God. This has been one of the stupidest weeks in ages. And not only talking about the stories, I'm just talking about the night balloon. Yeah. I'm still not sure how seriously I should be taking that. Not very, considering this is like the fourth time it's happened. Yeah. And, and like, they shot it down, and they're going to figure out what the night but... And, like, the point a lot of the military guys have been making is, like, they have satellites. Like, yeah. They, they, that probably have better cameras than that balloon. Yeah. But also, it's kind of blatant. Well, uh, there, there's... All right, for those of you like, for posterity... That's the part that worries me. For, that's the part that worries me a little bit about it, is, like, they're not even trying to be sneaky. For posterity to explain to people what this is all talking about, um, a Chinese spy balloon took a lazy little wander over the United States of America, and everyone lost their mind, and apparently it has to do with something with, uh, this is not the first time it's happened, it happened three times after Trump, it's, it's a th we just didn't call attention to it. What the, 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 their yeah, theory- Possibly Trump's, the other rumors are Trump's cabinet didn't tell him. <laughs> Which, that would make sense, but the other- uh... Which is both hilarious and horrifying. The, the theory is because we had, I think, believe the Secretary of State was going to China, that some people in the Chinese hard, hardliners on the Chinese side of things wanted to be dicks, and they sent it over here to, to kind of spoil the whole meeting thing, and we don't... Ooh, la, la. Or, all we know is I'm here in South Carolina, and the balloon came here. And you had no idea. I had no idea. It went nearby. It went to a place called Myrtle Beach. Now, if, if you're not aware of Myrtle Beach, if you ever think to yourself at some point, where can I go to get a lot of alcohol and Confederate flag merchandise? The answer is Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach is what happens when th I, there was a Hard Rock, there was a Harley's Davison, and there was a Ripley's, and everything else just grew out of them, like tumors, like cancer. That's 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 the basis of Myrtle Beach. That's the entire point of it. It's just there. It's it's that's it. And apparently, the, I'll, just, I'll just cross that off the vacation list. And then. the the balloon went over Myrtle Beach and out into the water. And I think they meant to shoot it earlier before it got over the water and just take care of Myrtle Beach for us. Era looking like she's ready to call Poe Dameron on his bullshit. Nein! All right, this way's the keeper. <laughs> Deeper. You know how many fights I got in on Twitter over The Last Jedi? Sold. Each week, Catherine of the uh, Radio Dead Air audience, but on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff right here for the we like to call What the Fuck the Royal Deal. This is Mad Libs Week. Crazy. These are these, these. Often we have stories that feel like, no, no, someone's fucking with us. This is just Mad Libs, right? And it's not. So let's get the first one up here. You remember Mad Libs? I can't believe there are kids on here who don't know Mad Libs, which is so weird to me. They still make Mad Libs. On paper, no less. Mad yeah, I'm sure you can play it online. Mad Libs, how this worked was, they would give you this, uh, this sheet, this notepad of prompts that you just fill in a noun, a verb, a subject, you know, whatever, to, to make a story. And they quite often make no fucking sense because people would ask for a noun and someone would say testicle. And, and yeah, it would just go from there. So this week, we're starting with also to teach you all the parts of speech so that you would know what a noun, a verb, an adjective was. Well, I learned that a testicle was a noun, so I worked. Um, man... <laughs> who allegedly left a dead fish at the Goonies' house rescued from rough seas near a stolen yacht. What? What? 
I told what? you. I'm not... And also, this is some shitty page layout because until you scroll down, it looks like that guy is the guy. Yeah. But he's not. That's an ad for a diabetes device. Unknowing rescuers plucked a man accused of placing a dead fish at an Oregon house featured in the Goonies from Rough Waters Friday, moments after the yacht he'd been on capsized. A man later identified as... A crime? I don't know. man later identified as Jericho Labonte, 35, of Victoria, British Columbia, was taken into custody Friday after a number of people recognized him, police in Astoria, Oregon said. Um, authorities started pursuing Labonte after receiving a report Wednesday. He posted a video on Facebook that showed him placing the dead fish on the porch of the residence. Um... Which that is kind of you can't just put fish on people's porches. It's it's that that's kind of that's kind of fucked up. But is that a crime or is it just rude? <laughs> like what's the crime? I guess trespassing. The home is nicknamed after the Goonies, Steven Spielberg's nineteen eighty four five boyhood adventure film in which the house appears. But it wasn't until the US Coast Guard shared a video Friday showing a dramatic rescue that authorities learned the boat in the video had been stolen. And the man rescued was believed to be Labonte. That is a crime. That is, that is in fact a crime. Story of police say Labonte was wanted on allegations of theft, endangering the person, unauthorized use of a vehicle, and criminal mischief. Video of the rescue was taken from onboard a U.S. Coast helicopter, showed a person, later identified as Labonte, alone in a 35-foot vessel, which had put out a mayday call and was taking on water. So, here's his week. He gets a fish. He takes it to the Goonies house, which was not the house the Goonies lived. Don't don't fucking worry about it. It's, just, it's a, from the movie. He drops. I still haven't seen it, so I don't know if the fish is like a reference. It's not. It has nothing to do with any fucking thing in the fucking movie. There's no fucking fish in the fucking movie. So first he does that, then he puts it on, what is it, put it on Facebook? Put it on Facebook. And then he steals a goddamn fucking yacht, and then he breaks it, so it's like got water coming in, and he calls for help, and the fucking Coast Guard has to be deployed. What happened? What there's wrong? There's a lot going on here. I can't. Makes sense, damn it! Like, you ever have one of those days where just, like, simple things keep going wrong? You try to take a pill, you drop it, you have to crawl around the bathroom looking for it, you spill your drink trying to pour it, just a million little tiny things and you're so frustrated, so I still haven't had as fucked up a day as this guy. It's like 10,000 knives when all you need, 10,000 forks when all you need is a knife, yeah. When all you need is some fresh lemon and pepper in a grill. Rain on your wedding day. <laughs> the fuck are you fucking doing? I can't... I would love an explanation for everything here. I'm at an age where just describing all this, I sound... I Just listening to this is making me exhausted. I need what a nap you? after reading about this. How the like, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. Why? I don't have the energy for that kind of mischief. But wait, there's more. Go to Des Moines for the next one. I, I just, I don't. Naked man terrorized Des Moines Hotel by swinging toilet plunger, pulling fire alarms. Naked and armed with a toilet plunger. That's how police say Las Vegas man terrorized. All that armed. <laughs> Have you ever seen the Daleks? Little exterminate little plungers. No, but it's Iowa. I promise you, two thirds of that hotel had guns. <laughs> so would we call the plunger armed? Well, probably not. No. This is America. Police say Trevin Hill, on January 28th, approached a victim in the 18th floor stairwell the Des Moines Marriott downtown with a plunger. According to the court documents, he yelled, 
I'm going to fucking get you, as he continued to chase the, vi- the victim with the toilet plunger in his hands. He also ran around naked on the 22nd floor of the Marriott, destroyed a sprinkler system. Um, he was seen by multiple people putting, pulling fire alarms around the hotel. Um, he'll continue running around multiple floors, swinging the toilet plunger at guests until he was restrained by Des Moines firefighters. He was charged with assault while displaying a dangerous weapon. <laughs> the fucking plunger. First degree criminal mischief and disorderly conduct. And you know what? It's it's terrible because, you know, he, he broke the Marriott in, in Des Moines. I don't think they have any other hotels. That's that's it. That's it. That's it. I feel like this is like the villain from Mystery Men that got left on the cutting room floor. You know, like he was the shoveler's nemesis, the plunger. And it just didn't make the final cut because it didn't make any damn sense. Now, they don't go into it, but we know what caused this. It's drugs. It's I swear to God, if humanity had a kryptonite, it would be meth. Right? Maybe that is. Maybe it. Maybe that. Maybe you're more right than you know. Right? Because, like, it is in a crystal form. Because you, I right. read all those old crazy Superman comics where there were like all those different colors of of kryptonite, like the red one to make him grow like ten arms or some shit. I'm pretty sure meth is like human kryptonite. Because every shit keeps happening. Running around naked, smashing the sprinklers, pulling the fire alarms. And you're out the whole time. Your brain is going, this is a good idea. Yeah. I can remember the last time I was in a hotel room that had a plunger. Which means potentially, like he, 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 did he bring it with him? Or steal it from the cleaning cart? Right. Because they don't give you those anymore. Yeah. Like, if you need your toilet plunged, you have to call them. Yeah. So, somehow he so found like, the Did he break into housekeeping and steal that shit? Of all the things he just had to have, his, what the fuck happened here? It, it, these, these stories, it just, it's like, how does this happen? We, we are, we are as a species, we are very uh, invested in narratives and in, in cause and effect. We, 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 we yes. need to have a story. And then shit like this happens in the real world and it doesn't work. It's, you, it's like you're just trying to cram shit in the wrong, you know, like the square hole and the round peg and trying to figure, it doesn't work. You need to immediately follow up the live section this night with the bad religion video for Stranger to Fiction. Yeah. Well, we have uh, we have a straight up idiot because this one makes sense. I mean, this is next one's a straight up idiot. So finally, we good God Almighty! I of course I don't understand how people fall for this shit. Again, we've had another one of these. Disney Springs gas station has more than $2,000 stolen when an employee falls for a telephone scam at 3 a.m. Disney Springs Speedway had more than $2,000 stolen when an overnight employee was apparently tricked by a fraudster posing as a company leader into putting money from the store's safe into a digital currency ATM where the money was stolen. Like the Bitcoin ATM? The Bitcoin ATM. October 30th, a store employee named Eric was working the overnight shift when he got a call at 3 a.m. from someone claiming to be his boss's boss. The person on the phone sounded urgent. There was a FedEx rush delivery and an upcoming fire marshal inspection, which, what? Why? And Eric, 30, wrote down invoice numbers and tracking numbers on a note that law enforcement found later. The voice also instructed Eric to, quote, send a picture of the fire extinguishers to make sure it was still valid. And then asked for pictures of the safe and all the money in the safe. Then the voice on the phone wanted money. Again, this was an emergency for the Speedway Corporation. Eric first attempted to use his own partner's Federal Union credit card to pay toward the Mexican bank account. Eric's transactions were unable to be processed because his bank canceled the request. 
So you are going to give your own money to a, the corporation you work for? You are both a good person and a moron. The suspect then tells Eric he needs to leave the store and go th toward the nearest bit stop. Eric takes the money from the safe and leaves the speedway unattended. Suspect keeps saying he would have local law enforcement monitor the store while he was away. Coincidentally, as Eric leaves, or Shanty Sheriff's deputy walks into the unattended store. Um, abandoning the store, Eric drove to a mobile gas station on South Apopka Vineland Road, which had a Bitcoin ATM. So he went from a Speedway gas station to a mobile gas station and deposited the Speedway's money into the Bitcoin ATM. It was too late to get the money back when Eric realized the car on the phone wasn't a Speedway supervisor. No. The store still hasn't gotten the money back. It hasn't been updated on the investigation since the incident was reported. Do you, how, how do you get a job? Right? When you don't have higher brain function. It, this is... How, like, we, either Eric is in on it, Possible. Or Eric, or Eric is the dumbest son of a bitch. He's not getting that a, we have ever covered. He's not getting a good referral. Like no. he's, he's the next job he applies for, the, the the boss is gonna call his references and the guy at the speedway is gonna go, Are you sitting the fuck down? <laughs> I'm going to tell you. How long do you have? I've got a tale to tell. Listen, labor laws prevent me from giving him a negative review, but let me just send you a link, though. Hi, Greedy. Hello. Dottie, Dottie's marching around here growling at everybody. I don't know why. I just, I've got this giant floofy thing. He's decided now he wants attention. Hi. Okay. What's all the attention? Just, it, it, yeah, it seems like it has to... You're sitting there going, he has to be in on it, right? Right? I mean, he has to be. Know. Because otherwise, like, I'm not sure she, he should be out unattended. This is like, this guy is every character Ashton Kutcher has ever played. Yeah. Like, why? Why does the fire marshal need a photo of the inside of the safe? Just stop and... Do the math for a minute on that one, and the whole thing will kind of fall apart. I mean, yes, money is flammable, <laughs> but that's... That's stretch. Hey, hey there. What's up? Did you look at this smug little thing? Hello, buddy. But yeah, I just... Dear God, it happened. You're, you're, it's at the point you're like, please let him have been in on it because I don't want to believe someone is this thing is stupid. Oh, and this is another one. I can't believe this person is stupid. And the, the, the reason why we have no choice but to believe it was because there's no possible way this guy could have profited from it. But this is incredibly, I, I don't even know. I don't even. Man, come on, load the story. There we go. Man pours bleach. Jam, syrup, etc. on Walmart floor due to customer service. Berks County, Pennsylvania. Walmart employees were bewildered by a man's actions after he purposely spilled numerous li liquids on multiple aisle floors because of having to, quote, wait in line too long and bad customer service. On two separate incidents... Tilden Township Police say 46-year-old Leonard Rep had walked into the Tilden store with a 13-year-old of no relation to him. Alleged, allegedly, Rep was a friend of the teen's family. Not a very good one. Officials say on the first incident it was January 14th after Rep had purposefully poured bleach, motor oil, dish soap, and maple syrup jelly jam 
on the numerous aisle floors of the Walmart. Then police say Rep returned to the Walmart on January 20th and poured bleach, pickles, and hot sauce on the floor multiple aisles. Releasing surveillance photos of Rep, police were able to identify, find, and interview him on January 30th. In the interview, authorities say Rep had admitted to both incidents, saying he had done so because of bad customer service and having to wait in long lines. Rep then told police that he did not think what he did was criminal. You don't, you don't know about vandalism? And, there's an and, Rep said that his bad experience was at a Lehigh Valley Walmart, but he decided to take his frustrations out on the Tilden Walmart. Why? That went, th that went too far away for you? Also, you know what really will, like, make the lines at Walmart longer? If all of the people who are supposed to be on cash registers are cleaning up spilled shit in every aisle. Yeah, because after you do this shit, even if your ass is arrested, the cops ain't cleaning that shit up. They ain't no, they ain't no and, cleaning crew. And retail places staff at the leanest level they possibly can. That's why if one person calls off, everybody's fucked because that's how they schedule it. Yeah. So, like... They don't have an extra cleaning person just hanging around waiting for a spill. Mm -hmm. So the service is going to get worse with every fucking bottle you open. How in the world could you not think? You're 46 years goddamn old. How the fuck could you think that would... I didn't know it was a crime. That's, that's my age. And I, I know not to do that. You, you've... Like, it's not yours. You didn't pay for it. So that there's that to start with. And then you, you, oh my God. See, and I, my mom was very strict when I'd go grocery shopping with her as a child. Like, if she bought me a treat, a candy bar or something, we were not those people that would just eat it and keep the wrapper and scan the wrapper. Fuck no. You are not touching it. It doesn't belong to us yet. After they scanned it, my mom would hand it to me and be like, now it's ours. Now you can eat it. We were not those people. I, I, I didn't know about that until adulthood, that people do that. And I guess technically it's not wrong as long as you pay for it, but I still feel weird about it. But yeah, like you, those aren't your thing. No. And honestly, even if you bring up the empties and pay for them, not going to help. I'm just hoping you didn't mix those together because like there's a lot of things that mixing with bleach become right. murder yes like i don't think you can mix bleach and vinegar can you i don't know depends on the ammonia content i okay. I, I i i like there's a lot of shit you should not mix with bleach so i'm hoping he was just every aisle dumping one thing because otherwise you have a chemical weapon on your hands you get one bottle of Windex mixed in there, they gotta evacuate the fucking store. Yep. Everybody's fucked. So... It always amazes me how many people don't know that. That, that, I'm all... I've worked a lot of jobs where I've watched people starting to pour the glass cleaner into a mop bucket with bleach and had to be like, no, you'll kill us all. <laughs> Well, next, what, what do you look at this? Look at this. This is <laughs> he's burning. I am the show, but also here's my butt. His face crammed into the crook of my elbow and purring into it. He's perfectly happy. You're goofy. You're weird. He's a weird cat. He's a good boy. So next, we have uh, more from that merry trickster, Jesus Christ. Jesus, Jesus is always telling people to do such hilarious things. <laughs> For example, men who drove Ferrari into Intercoastal told police Jesus told him to. Palm Beach, Florida. 
The man who... Oh, that's a body of water. That's, yes, the intercoastal waterway, yes. The man who drove his Ferrari into the intercoastal in Palm Beach late December told police he did it because, quote, Jesus told me to. December 26th, uh, Boxing Day. Uh, James M- Mucciaccio? Mucciaccio. Mucciaccio. I think. All right. That sounds weird. That, that can't be an Italian name, Mucciaccio. It can't be. A uh, Deerfield weird. Beach was approached by a police officer as he was removing items from his Ferrari. Parked on a public dock. Uh, told the officer his friend told him to park on the dock so he could pick, up, pick him up by boat. He was told he could not park on the dock. He apologized, went to retrieve his driver's license from the Italian sports car. He then proceeded to reverse off the dock, put the car in drive, and accelerated at high speed into the Palm Beach Inlet. He was able to get out of the car before it sunk and was pulled from the water by two fishermen in a nearby boat. When the officer asked him why he drove into the inlet, he stated, Jesus told me to drive through a small gate and into the six-foot window. He also said, Jesus made me the smartest man on earth, so it's hard to have this much responsibility. And, quote, money is going to be irrelevant in two days. Remember to smile. Oh, it's Elon Musk using a fake name. (laughs) (laughs) Just the belt down. He also stated the reason he drove into the inlet is because the officer was on the dock was Egyptian and did not believe in Jesus. So we had to have that light little sprinkling of racism on top. Yeah, because I guess that came up. Yeah. Investigation also revealed the license plate that was attached to the Ferrari belonged to his Ford Mustang. So apparently that was not even his Ferrari. He took the plates off his Mustang. He put them on a Ferrari. He got in the Ferrari, he drove off a dock, and then he blamed Jesus. Jesus wasn't really big on material wealth. (laughs) So a case could be made that he was like, you want to get to heaven, motherfucker? Put that car in the ocean. Oh, Jesus, you're always telling people to do such wacky stuff. Merry prankster. Can you imagine if Jesus really was this guy that people think? Like, if Je- I mean, maybe it's boring being Jesus. I don't know. But can you imagine if he was just up there like, we're going to do that. You! Oh, cover yourself in peanut butter and set a Walmart on fire. Because you see, it's this, Jesus. Jesus is up there going, God, God. God, watch, watch, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Dad, Dad, you're not looking. <laughs> Dad, look. <laughs> you're not looking. I'll make you look. This is just Jesus lashing out for his father's attention. Yeah. And it's very sad. Yeah. A family therapist could really fix all of this. <laughs> we've got one more tonight, and I wish we got video. Oh my, we have video. And this is one of those points where I'm sitting here going, I wish we had the old YouTube. The the classic YouTube. The YouTube where I could get away with playing copyrighted music on YouTube. Why? I'm going to have to do the music with my mouth, which is, is I, I can't help it. It has to be done. As we, we get the video up here. Look, I'll give, it, give Sarah the link here. Get ready, because this this is, has to happen. A lot of space in this mall. New Wall Street deals are in. <laughs> I had to do it. I don't know what music that was. That was the. That was called Blues Brothers. Oh, I've never seen that. Oh. 
I'm I'm disappointed, but okay. I was thinking this is like the Fast and Furious version of that Billie Eilish video. Where she's just running around the abandoned mall eating everything. Uh, Watch suspects race through mall in audacious robbery. Police say a pair of suspects. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Canada. That's rude, eh? That's rude, eh? Yeah. You loser. Police say a pair of suspects took a speeding car and a ride through a closed Canadian shopping mall in order to pull off a heist. The car was got on camera around 1.10 a.m. Wednesday, smashing through the Toronto Mall's entrance and careening through the shopping center. Police say at some point, suspects stopped and robbed an electronic store before continuing on and smashing through an exit on the other side of the mall. Police are calling this madcap action movie style incident an audacious crime. Stories have since reported the car, which had been reportedly stolen, looking for the culprits. They're going to find you. You're, you're, if you're the kind of person who decides the perfect crime is to smash through the mall in a stolen car, something tells me that you're not, you know, God's gift to crime. You know how many cameras there are in your average mall? 80 bajillion. Like, you know, like, when they started putting cameras in offices and people freaked out about it and everyone working retail was like, oh, you don't like someone watching you while you work? That must be hard. Because there's cameras everywhere but in the bathroom stalls. And we, uh, maybe you go there. And my point is, like, yeah, it's a stolen car, but if you want to steal shit, you're going to have to exit that car. Cameras. Uh, so no car co- co- But also that But also that does look fun. <laughs> see, this is why you gotta see the Blues Brothers. You gotta see it. Or have you ever walked through a mall and they have a car there that they're like sweepstakes thing or something and you just think about like how did they get that in there? And who got to do it? <laughs> They just, they, someone thought this was a good plan. This was not a good plan. You have left evidence every fucking where. There's a lot of people that seem to think stolen car equals anonymity. But, um, the Chinese spy balloon can see you. Too, too many people have watched, too many people have watched too many movies is the problem. Yeah, yeah. Because you know the guy in there was doing, the, the guy sitting next to him was going, we're on a mission from God. Would you stop that shit? <laughs> Would you shut up? I can't, I hate Illinois Nazis. Shut the fuck up, Rob. Jesus. <laughs> uh, fucking hell. And Canada, of all places, so. All right, so that yeah. first thing we learned this week is just yeah, it, stealing the car does not make it. They're never going to. They're going to find you, you dumb shit. I mean, in the eighties, that might have been the case, but now, like, you're on a. Ca- if you leave your house, you're on a camera somewhere. Um, we've learned that if Jesus is telling you to do something, don't. I mean, it depends what he's telling you. Well, if Jesus tells you feed the poor, be nice to people, by all means, do those things. If Jesus is like, donate some money to charity, make the world a better place, do those things. If Jesus is like, drive your fucking car, doc, you might just have schizophrenia. And I don't say that as a joke. I'm not making fun of schizophrenics. Literally, you might just have schizophrenia. However it goes, if Jesus suddenly starts talking to you, you might want to sit down, drink a glass of water, just breathe a little bit before you make any decisions. Yeah. Yeah. We have learned that the, the way to fix bad customer service is not to pour bleach and vinegar on the fucking floor. Also, addendum to the last one, if Jesus tells you you're the smartest person in the world, no. No. 
I, I, I know for a fact I am not. I, I have empirical evidence to my name that I am not the smartest person in the world. And I, I consider that. If this shows up in my home and is like, you are the smartest person in the world. I'll be like, well, that debunks Christianity. Yes. I'll be like, my, motherfucker, I have done many things throughout my lifetime. I am, I, I, yeah. the fact that I am a stupid motherfucker, I use as self-defense because it makes me go, wait a minute, am I about to be a stupid motherfucker again? <laughs> it's an important life lesson. Um, we've learned that if your boss calls and says to take all the store's money and put it in the Bitcoin machine, that is not your boss. We've learned that naked and swinging a plunger is no way to go through life, son. No, 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 no. And finally, we've learned that Sometimes the shit's not going to make any goddamn sense. You're going to get the house from an 80s movie and a dead fish and a yacht and the Coast Guard and nothing's going to make a fucking bit of sense. Sometimes there's just a glitch in the Matrix. Once you accept chaos as a an element of reality and you stop seeking the narrative life doesn't get any easier but it does get a whole lot more chill because you're like okay this shit's not on me 